So in this video I'm going to talk to you about electronegativity and how it can affect the type of bond that forms between two different types of atoms. So let's go ahead and first talk about what electronegativity is. Electronegativity is going to be the affinity of an atom for electrons. Essentially what that means is how hard does that atom pull on electrons? If you have a really high electronegativity, then that particular atom has a strong pull. If it has a low electronegativity, it has a weaker pull. And so effectively what we want to look at is what kind of difference is there between two atoms in a bond. All right, so let's draw a generic molecule on the board. So, just so we can talk about electronegativity. So we've got a ton of different types of bonds happening here. And the question we have is, what kinds of bonds are these? Now, from the way I've drawn them, the fact that they're solid lines, you can clearly see that these are indeed covalent bonds. But what we would like to know is, is this covalent bond a polar or a nonpolar covalent bond? Similarly, is this bond a polar or nonpolar covalent bond? Furthermore, if I were just to say give you the relative polarities, I'm sorry, not polarities, the electronegativities of atoms, could you tell me what kind of bond they would form? So let's go ahead and just look at this for now. So the electronegativities, which you could obtain from an electronegativity chart for carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen are as follows. Carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5, oxygen has an electronegativity of, of 3.5, and hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. So if I wanted to determine what kind of bond this is here between oxygen and hydrogen, all I need to do is subtract the electronegativity of one atom from the other. And I always take the lower electronegativity and I subtract it from the higher electronegativity. So here, if I take 3.5 for oxygen and I subtract 2.1 from hydrogen, it gives you 1.4. Now this number alone doesn't mean anything to you right now, but remember in lecture I defined for you what range you should look for for each distinct type of bond, and those ranges were as follows. If we're looking at a nonpolar covalent bond, you're going to look for an electronegativity, which we will just define here as a lowercase, I'm sorry, it's this kind of squiggly E. You'll look for an electronegativity that is less than 0 0.5, which means the difference between one atom's electronegativity and the other should be less than 0 0.5. We're looking at a polar covalent bond. The electronegativity is going to be less than or equal to 1.6 and greater than or equal to 0 0.5. And finally, if we're looking at an ionic bond, then the electronegativity is going to be greater than 1.6. Okay. So here we took 3.5 for oxygen. We subtracted 2.1 for hydrogen, which is the electronegativity of each of these. And we got a difference in electronegativities of 1.4. So where does that fall here in each of these? And that difference in electronegativities falls in the polar range. So this would be classified as a polar covalent bond. Here, if we look at two carbons, okay, each of those carbons, remember, has an electronegativity of 2.5. So if I take 2.5, I subtract 2.5 from it, I'm of course going to get zero, which is going to fall in the nonpolar range. Okay? Let's say I wanted to look at carbon and oxygen. Okay? Oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5. Okay? Carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5. So I would take 3.5, subtract 2.5 from it, 
and I would wind up with 1.0, which falls between 0 0.5 and 1.6. So, that would mean that this is a polar covalent bond. Now if I look over here at carbon and hydrogen, carbon has an electronegativity of 2.5, hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, giving me a difference of 0 0.4 which falls into the nonpolar range. So that is a nonpolar covalent bond. If you're confused about where I'm getting these numbers, these numbers come from that chart I showed you in your lecture that details the relative electronegativity of every single atom in the periodic table, or every single element. Okay? I would give you that particular table on your exam. So, let's say that we looked at, not this stuff, but let's say that I asked you what would happen if sodium and fluorine formed a bond. So sodium, if you go to that chart or table, has an electronegativity of 0 0.9, while fluorine has an electronegativity of 4.0. So again, same thing, 4.0, minus 0 0.9 gives me a value of 3.1. And that value is greater than 1.6, so these two would engage in an ionic bond. Okay. So, the breakdown again, the way that you will calculate electronegativity if you'd like an equation is, you're going to first calculate the difference in electronegativity of the electronegativity of one of your atoms in the bond the higher one, minus the electronegativity of the other atom. Okay? Now remember, if you're looking at a molecule like water or any molecule that has more than two atoms involved in it, so water has three, in terms of my class to de determine the relative difference in electronegativity to this bond, you're only looking at the electronegativity of this hydrogen and this oxygen, not this hydrogen over here. Similarly, if you wanted to determine what kind of bond this is here, you would ignore this hydrogen and its electronegativity and only focus on the oxygen and hydrogen. Okay? So you're going to determine the difference in that electronegativity and then you're going to see where that difference falls. So if you have a nonpolar covalent bond, then that difference in electronegativity is going to be less than 0.5. If you have a polar bond, polar covalent bond, that electronegativity or difference in electronegativity is going to be greater than 0.5 or equal to, sorry, and then it's also going to be less than or equal to 1.6. Finally, if you have an ionic bond, then that difference in electronegativity is going to be greater than 1.6 in the examples that I gave you. Okay. So that is effectively how you calculate the relative type of bond you have based on the difference of electronegativities between two atoms involved in that. Again, remember to get these values here, I'm going to give you a chart most likely, or at least tell you in the question what the relative electronegativities are. Okay. So that's all I have to say about electronegativity.